Okay, so we're going to dive into a big story that Canada continues to talk about as it should be. Pope Francis is in Quebec City today now for a second day on his tour of Canada. And a piece in the Toronto Star is asking, who does this publicity tour and media coverage around it really serve? <laughs> and what happens next after the apology? So uh, let's kick off this discussion. There have been a lot of moments that the media has been covering, and, and I guess the question is the impact. And ultimately, as the Toronto Star asks, who is this serving, yeah. ultimately? Who is this serving? Anybody want to start? I can go. I mean, I've thought a lot about this over the past few days. I think that people forget, like, so the apology was for all people who are affected by residential schools, right? But now what we're seeing in the days following is just basically some televised mass, <laughs> yeah. which is interesting because there's 1.67 million Indigenous people in Canada, only less than a third of them identify as Catholic. So, wow, okay. So yeah. who that actually is for, you know, seeing the, the Pope give a sermon or whatever, is, is I'm not to deny that that might be significant for them, but for everybody else or for a lot of people, it could be ranging from indifferent to like outright upsetting, angering, triggering. And I think it's important that we make sure that we remember that this isn't just a celebration. Um, for some people it might be, but it's also extremely disappointing, rage-inducing, and we have to make room to hold all of that mm. for Indigenous yep. people. Mm. Yeah, yeah you, you hit the, the nail on the head there. I think there have been moments uh, when you see sort of the, the, the mass masses in auditorium stadiums that it's almost like a recruitment program instead of being like the, the purpose of this was supposed to be mm -hmm. uh, a trip for the Pope to atone and to show penance and to apologize. But when you see sort of the celebration, it's, it, you, I love that you said we need to be able to hold these two things in my head, in your head at once, because I'm having a hard time holding the other one in my head mm -hmm. at once. And maybe I need to yeah. show a little more grace because it's very difficult as a non-believer. Uh, to do that. Yeah, it's so, been very challenging. You. And, you know, I was on News Channel, I've spoken to a lot of Indigenous leaders and a lot of people about how they feel about this, like spent hours talking to people. And I agree with you, this, this seems to be less focused on the children, which is, this is why he's here. And it feels like it's all about the Pope. It feels like there's more of a photo op and giving him presents. And I know... He's received a lot of gifts, one that was very controversial. He, was, he received a headdress, which is a very important gift to give in the Indigenous community. And a lot of people were fine with it because they did ask, special, they asked permission and they were fine with it. But a lot of Indigenous people are upset because they're like, he doesn't deserve that yet. This is something that's very important in our community. And he hasn't done anything. Like, this is, the apology is great. It is step one. There are many more steps that yes. need to happen before we start giving gifts and applauding what he's done. The fact that he's here is great and, and that's wonderful. But there needs to be other things. The Vatican needs to hand over documents that the indigenous community has been asking for. There needs to be accountability for the people who are still alive, who, who enacted these atrocities on these children in those residential schools. Those people are still alive, and, and what I haven't heard anything about what's going to happen to them. Criminal it's, charges. Right, it's exactly. It's almost like he's here, and it's like a, a, almost like, I know... I don't want to criticize his apology because it's important. Even though I'm not a huge fan of apologies, it's for me, it's all the actions that you do afterwards. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you leave here and you go back to the Vatican, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to revoke the doctrines? Are you going to do all the things that you need to do to make that community feel like you really are sorry? Or is this just like you guys are saying, a rock and roll tour where you come and you sit and you say you're sorry, which is great, and then you go home and nothing happens? Because we, the indigenous community has seen this before. Back in 2008, Prime yep. Minister Stephen Harper apologized mm -hmm. to the Indigenous community. And it was, everybody was like, that's great. And then later on, he did more horrible things to the Indigenous children. And it's like, okay, so you have an apology, but then look at what you're actually doing mm -hmm. to this community. You're not helping them at all. If anything, you're hurting them again. So I'm with the people who are... Like, Chief Harvey McLeod is very hopeful. I spoke to him, and he's like, I hope this is the beginning. But I understand the people who are just like... I'm not sure where this is going. But I think that attitude, the I'm not sure where this is going, is essential because it is, um, you know, it can be pressure to enact the change that you're talking about. Because an apology, it's a lot of words, but you have to back it up. And my worry over the last few days is that image is more powerful sometimes than words. And this story was covered internationally. Mm -hmm. And I can guarantee you that more people saw the image of the headdress mm -hmm. than read or listened to the apology. So, mm -hmm. so the international and probably domestic impression would be seeing the Pope wearing that headdress, 
not really knowing what the words are, not knowing how to put more pressure and sustain this momentum and be like, oh, everything's chill. Yeah, like everything's, everything's okay. great. He's wearing but the headdress. Doesn't it feel good. like it's being yeah. covered in yeah. the same right. way that we've covered the yeah. royal family? A little like bit. It feels like the, the media, in terms of like, there, there are going to be like special issues of magazines that come out, sort of commemorating this mm -hmm. this visit. I think. R Riley, can I ask you about this? I know you're Anishinaabe. Mm -hmm. You do not speak for the entire community because oh, newsflash: Indigenous people is not a monolith. Mm. So there's that. <laughs> uh, but this, the, the headdress has become symbolic for the fact that there have been so many mixed reactions from Indigenous and First Nations right across the country. Mm -hmm. Some who are the person who, if, if I read correctly, who actually gave the Pope the headdress was the former TRC commissioner, Willie Littlechild. Yeah. And, and so on the one hand, you have the former commissioner mm. of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission himself who put the headdress on the Pope, but then you have Murray St. Clair who then became the next commissioner of the TRC who's like, what the heck is going on exactly. over there? <laughs> like you have two really revered yeah. leaders in different communities, both having very different reactions. So how do you square that away? Yeah, oh my gosh. I I mean, I will say I was on the first one of on the side when I first saw it that I was like I almost want to throw up. Uh -huh. And um, not because I was angry at Willie Littlechild, but because, you know, there are so many Indigenous people who have dedicated their entire lives to serving our nations, to serving our communities, and who will never receive an honor like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this man is here apologizing for his role in genocide, and he is getting a headdress. And so I see why that was upsetting for so many people. <laughs> at the same time, Willie Littlechild is a survivor himself. Yep. And so if that's something that he felt like maybe he needed to do for himself, for his healing, that was also his family's mm -hmm. headdress that he gave. Mm -hmm. And so I'm also not in a position, I think, to tell a survivor that I disagree with whatever they needed to do to find peace. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that maybe gave me a little bit of solace in this was I saw, it came in a tweet from Professor Daniel Heath Justice. And he just reminded folks that, you know, um, our generosity was never the problem. Mm. It's the mm. colonizers who exploit that generosity where that problem is. Mm. And that gave me some perspective and some peace. And that's probably where I, I think about in this gift. But you're right, the headdress is a great conversation about the, the spread of opinions we have in the community over mm. this. Yeah, for sure. Mm. You know, listen, I've been trying to stand back and listen to all the voices that I can. I've been trying to read, al you know, when I say alternative news sources, it's not what would people call, you know, the mainstream media. APTN isn't a perfect example. Mm -hmm. is there's a whole different perspective shift and trying to read and understand that there are many, many competing and complex emotions with this visit and trying to understand all of them. But I also come at this from someone who was raised Catholic. Mm -hmm. And I look at the leader of the church that I was raised with, um, a, a leader with whom most of my family still reveres. Mm -hmm. So I have to try to, and I've been talking about it on the show, the difficulty and the challenge that I've had because I'm asking myself, what is it that I want out of this mm. visit? And, and as someone who wants better for the future of the Catholic Church, what do I need to see him do? And I think that that's been the real difficult part is everything starts with words. But he's 85. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much popularity this tour has with the higher other higher ups at the mm -hmm. Vatican. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they have any appetite to move forward with anything meaningful once he passes, God bless his soul. Yeah. But literally I look and say, is this all just pomp and circumstance yeah. that's gonna go up in a puff of smoke mm -hmm. when he passes? Well, if history tells us yeah, anything, so then yes it is. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, I, and I think issue. that's the sad part. Yeah. Yeah. How do we press yeah. for the next thing? And the governor general put it best yesterday There was when that in that press conference, reconciliation is earned. It is earned, and I, I feel a lot of people don't feel like the Catholic Church has earned that reconciliation quite yet. The apology is nice, but again, step one. From your perspective, and you know, we want to end with your perspective on this, what do you want to see happen next? Yeah, I mean, I think that Indigenous people have been really clear about the actions that they want to see following the apology. I can criticize the words of the apology to death, and I would, but I mean, at the end of the day, I don't care if his apology falls short so long as he implements the mm -hmm. things that actually change life for Indigenous people on the ground. Yeah. And some of that includes revoking the doctrine of discovery, returning artifacts. They have our ancestors in their basements of their churches that have never been laid to rest. Mm -hmm. They have artifacts. Yep. And all of these things are things that cost them zero dollars to do, mm -hmm. and they could do it. And if they can't, it makes it sends, I think, a bad message for the harder work that is yet to come if they can't do those bare minimum things right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Hey there, and thanks for sticking around. Wasn't that just fantastic? You know where you can get some more all-around great content? Our YouTube page. It's filled with all the laughs and thought-provoking chats you could ask for.
So do yourself a favor, like and subscribe now.